Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Stacy Brasman. One out of three women have eating disorders, and one out of every nine men have eating disorders. 50,000 people a year die of diagnosed eating disorders. Thousands and thousands and thousands of eating disorders go undiagnosed. Because on the death certificate, you know, when you pass away from an eating disorder, it doesn't say you died from anorexia or bulimia, it said you died from, for instance, heart failure or, or dehydration. <coughs> eating disorders is not a choice, it's a disease. It's now known as an official disease in the psychiatric community as well as the American Association of Eating Disorders. Body image is a, a very important thing. Because body image is how you see yourself. Not how other people see you, but how you feel and see about yourself. Not how she sees you or he sees her. When your body image starts to fail and you start to feel bad about yourself, you know, many things can happen. You become unhappy, you become depressed, you develop an eating disorder. Body image comes from many different places. You, you know, you start off with a little kid, with a little infant that comes out of your mom's womb and everything's perfect. And then the media and society tells you who you should be. And, what you should look like. And then you start to, 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 to like lose who you are. You say, maybe I should be that way. Maybe I should start not eating or starving myself or, you know, wearing self-tanning cream so I don't feel, you know, dark enough or I wipe my teeth. And, and then you start to lose your sense of self. We're in a makeover society. There's a thousand makeover shows. Nothing is good enough right now. And, and, and body image, keeping a strong body image is, is the most important thing and creating a strong sense of self. I developed my body at age 10. When I, I was a little kid, my story, uh, I was once to audition for Annie. I, I, as a kid, I was the only child. I would eat a lot of Oreo cookies. I didn't know any different. And I was a little chubby. I mean, looking back, I was a couple of pounds overweight. I wasn't technically obese. My mom took me to the audition Annie. And, then, and I went to the audition, and I sang her, I will come out tomorrow. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and thank you. <laughs> Maybe do come true. I can do it. The whole trailer here. And, um, and I wanted to be Annie on Broadway. I was 10 years old. I, I was in a big stage like this, and I got a chance to uh, sing in front of a big agent, and, and uh, he said, No, kids, you have a really good voice, but there are no fat Annie. I was like, Oh my God, that's right. There are no fat Annie. She was an orphan in the Depression. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been Little Orphan Fanny or something. <laughs> Exercise bulimia is, is a disorder. You're not purging, you know, or, or using laxative, but you're exercising to burn the calories, which is just as dangerous as, you know, as throwing up in certain ways because the results are, are negative. You might, you know, develop certain <coughs> muscles, but you can also develop bad knees. I suffer from problems now from that. Bad knees, um, stress fra fractures are very uh, common, hernias, um, all types of physical problems. Overtraining causes depression, insomnia, uh, loss of appetite. I guess that's what, what I was aiming for at the time. But, you know, if you're working out, Thousand, two thousand calories a day, eating eight hundred, and you're not overweight. You can get sick. You can become underweight. And I guess I started binging, like to go out of wings after, like, you know, after we had dinner three hours ago, and like go out to eat, you know, or order stuff in, like pizzas. And I wasn't even hungry. I was just eating, eating, eating. I came back like after like a year or two of college, and my mom's like, "What happened to you?" I'm like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "You didn't gain the 15, freshman fifteen. You gained the freshman thirty-five." I didn't, even, I didn't even realize. I was so out of touch with my body that I didn't realize I was gaining all this weight. I had no money in college. I would try, every, I would try diet pills, anything. I actually bought diet pills at the dollar store. <laughs> You've done it too? <laughs> I can't be a comedian. I should have known they were going to work because weight was actually spelled W-A-I-T. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for it to work. And as we get a part, I got a very big part in an off-Broadway Broadway show, and 
the director told me I need to lose weight. If I had to wear a skimpy outfit. And I, you know, I really think you're really funny. Just lose a couple of pounds. Now to me, a couple of pounds was like, oh my god, I'm too fat. You know, I was like, oh my god, I gotta do something quickly because I'm in trouble. So, you know, I started exercising like insane and not eating, and then like, you know, eating too much, and then exercising crazy, and then one day, after the show, I'm like, I, I just ate, you know, then all the pressure got to me, and I started binging, you know, it was like, what am I going to do? It was like, nothing's working. I was in the bathroom, it was after the show, and I stuck my toothbrush down my throat, a little too far, and up came my dinner. And in that moment, I felt very powerful. Like, wow, I can do this. I had like control. I, I, I just like, I didn't have to exercise before. I, I just threw up my entire dinner. Why did I think of this 10 years ago? And I was like, oh my God, I must have threw up 300 calories in that toilet bowl. Let me try it again. So that was my first official bulimia. Not that I wasn't bulimia before, but that was my bulimia. But I didn't, I didn't realize that at the time. I thought that was normal. I'm like, I'll do this once in a while. So it went on and on. And I kept throwing up three, four times a week. And, you know, I guess my weight started going down. He said, oh, you look so good. I'm like, really? Thank you. <laughs> and I started feeling good about myself, you know. I thought. And then, you know, it caused me to do the show. I started getting stomach pains and acid reflux. But I ignored them. It wasn't that bad, you know. You know, being thin was more important than, you know, having teeth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, Luckily, that whoever my friend, you know, took me to the hospital because I don't know if I'd be alive to tell my story today. Well, that day I realized that I had an eating disorder for probably 15, 20 years. I didn't even realize it. I thought what I was doing was normal. I thought the overtraining, exercise was great. Why not do exercise? It's great for you, right? Not, not the way I was doing it. I thought throwing up once in a while was okay. I was just nauseous. I was in total denial that I was sick. Anorexia nervosa is the leading killer of all psychological disorders. More than schizophrenia, more than suicide, more than anything. And thin does not always equal fit. You can be heavy and fit. You know, there's a, there's a story that you can be anorexic and technically obese. Did you know that? You can be anorexically thin, but technically obese because your body weight is all, is, your body weight might be low, but your fat content, or your BMI, is very high. Because what happens when you're anorexic is you burn all your muscle and all you are are fat bones. So weight doesn't always equal fit. Uh, dieting can make it fat. It made me fat. <laughs> Excessive dieting can make it irritability, depression, withdrawal, uh, sexual disinterest. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Eating disorders are never about your size, it's about control. It's about controlling who you are. It's not about how thin you are, or how big you are, or how, you know, vivacious you are. It's about control, it's about stress, it's about dealing with stress, it's about dealing with anxiety, it's about dealing with depression, it's about dealing with all your emotions. But your emotions don't come out by crying, maybe. They come out through how you control yourself. Through the only way I can control myself is what I eat or what I don't eat. Or how much I work out. Because, you know, let's be honest, you're in a stressful environment. Am I right or wrong? If you think you, you have a problem, even if you're not sure, really, it's really important to talk to a professional. I know that sounds so like cliche, but early intervention is the most important way to prevent a really bad situation.